What is going on, tubers? Friends met at nationals, friends not at nationals. Uh, making a video today to show off a set that I've been working on for a long time. Um, I brought one of the cards to the show uh, to see if I could uh, sell it or trade it for something. Didn't, so I brought it back and I put it into the set and it made me wonder where am I with this set? Um, so it's kind of a set update. Um, but I'm also going to take this video and if I can, I'm going to post it on Panini's um, Facebook page uh, as an explanation as to why I will no longer support Panini products. Uh, to me, there are three types of collectors. And I should state, prior to this, many some know, many don't know. For years, I've worked in the collectibles industry. I worked for companies that sold coins and other things. And uh, we really got onto the psychology of collecting of why people collect and what type of collectors there are. And to me, in sports cards, there are three type of collectors. There are people that collect a particular team. You collect almost everything about the team because you love the team. Then there is the player collector. You collect almost everything about a particular player that you love. And then there's the set builders. And that falls into what I particularly enjoy doing, is building sets. And where the issue comes into play is the logic behind the design of the set. So I'll show the cards um, of the set, and then I'll talk about my issue with the particular set uh, and my issue with Panini as I talk about another set I was going to do until I researched it and found out um, how they completely messed it up. So the set in question, or that I'm going to show, is the 2010 uh, Team Supreme. I think this is the plates and pat patches. So there are supposed to be 50 cards in the set. Sorry about the glare, I'll try to get it out. Um, but after checking out the uh, Beckett website for getting the checklist, there are two cards that were not produced. So there's 48, of which I have 45 right now. One is on eBay, I know, eBay right now. Uh, one I'm sure I can find, and then the, the last one is what we're going to talk about uh, and focus on with Panini, about Panini's issues. So let's get to the cards. Uh, this is an all-patch set, and I'll give Panini props. I love the design. It's a big patch. Um, card. Um, you really can't fake them. Let's see when I get to a logo patch or even just the next patch. This wasn't a product you had to worry about faking because it's too hard for someone to try to rip the patch out from underneath it without doing damage to the surface there. So we got Wes Welker, uh, LaShawn McCoy. So if you look at that, there's no way you're going to be able to lift that patch out. So you didn't have to worry about that. Chad Ochocinco, Cedric Benson, Terrell Suggs, Logo patch, you know how I was with patches. Um, Deshaun Jackson, Brandon Jacobs, Debra Henderson, Debra Henderson logo patch, Felix Jones nameplate, Reggie Wayne two color patch, Bo Scaife, which we'll get into it. That knows numbered out of 35. Almost every other card in this set is numbered out of 50. There are a few short prints, and that's my issue. Uh, if you're going to put a set out, Panini, if you're going to design a set for set collectors, if you're putting a set of 50 out, don't put in short printed cards that are damn near impossible to find. It is devastating to someone who wants to build a set. And I didn't realize this until about probably halfway into the set back in 2010 when I was doing it, that there's one out of fucking two. Why would you create a card out of two for one set that is almost 50 of all the others? Dwayne Bow, three color patch, Matthew Stafford, uh, two color, and that's a short print, I believe, out of 19. Darrell Rivas, short print out of seven. I got lucky that I found it. Uh, Bernard Berrien, one color patch. Brian Arapko, three color, nasty. Ed Oriel, two color. Uh, Will Smith, fresh prints, logo patch. Calvin Johnson, nice four color. Then we'll go up here, Sean Green, two color, Lewis Murphy, two color, Frank Gore, two color, Adrian Peterson, two color, Matt Castle, filthy, filthy logo patch. Props for you, Pernini, on producing that card, but you fucked this set up, you totally royally screwed it up. Um, let's see, you gotta go over here. Brent Selleck, logo patch, Darren McFadden, Lee Evans, captain's patch, awesome patch. Cadillac Williams, Vernon Davis, logo patch, beautiful, look at that, that is just sweet. Uh, Marshawn Lynch, 
Jamal Charles, another AFC 50, you know, patch, 50th anniversary, I believe. Uh, Santana Moss, nameplate. Dustin Keller, two color. Steve Slayton, Texans name from the jersey across the front. Mark Sanchez. Filthy, filthy Tom Brady. Everett, you passed up on it, buddy. You passed up. Uh, Clinton Portis. Maurice Jones Drew. Filthy logo. Got that from a gone but not forgotten tuber, 90s Cowboys. Joseph Adai. Filthy Roddy White Falcon logo patch. Got that from 90s Cowboys also. Tony Romo. Kevin Cobb. Darren Sproles. Brian Urlacher. So I'm missing Greg Jennings and Greg Olson. Greg Olson is up right now. But again, this set is basically impossible for me to actually complete because there's a Heath Miller 2 of 2. Those cards are either ripped, thrown away because it's a shitbag player that no one cares about, or it's in a Steeler Fanatics collection. Now let's talk about another set. Brand new from this year. Majestic. There's Regal Runners. There's Wondrous Receivers. And there's a Quarterback. Astonishing Arms. And then there's um, Distinguished Defenders. There are three or four colors variations of all these cards. Like here, I believe this is red. It's red because it has the red lines. The Curtis Martin cut auto kind of sucks. I got him. But you notice it's out of 15. This one, I think this is the base. It's out of 49. But here's a base that's out of 99. Here's a gold version. It's gold because, no, that's it. It's gold because it's gold, got gold on the top, so that Curtis Martin is not a red version. This is gold, and this is out of 49. So the gold version is out of 49. Is, is that how what I'm seeing? Let's see. Um, this is a base, and that's out of 49. There is absolutely zero logic to how they numbered the different color variations of these three or the four different sets. Panini, what are you doing? Who is the idiot that you allow to work for you that says, hey, let's put together a green, blue, red, gold, multicolor set and have absolutely zero logic to behind the numbering of each set? I can understand a base set number to 99. I can understand red to 50. I can understand a different color to 25. I can understand a color to 10. I cannot understand how there are oddball numbers within each of the different color variations because it's freaking impossible to put a set together like that. So until you get your act together, Panini, I will no longer, I will not buy any of your product because it's crap. And I didn't realize it on these until it was too late. So I'm going to have to take these. It's wasted money that is no longer going to go into the Panini paycheck. It's going to go into the Topps paycheck or the older cards that were produced prior to Panini taking um, some of the companies over like Playoff or Donors because those companies had logic behind all of their sets. Every once in a while you'd come across a short print, but for the most part, there were sets out of 100, there were sets out of 50, 75, 25, 10, 15, whatever it is, but not mixed within this, this kind of rainbowy type popular thing to do right now. And even if you're doing a rainbow, just keep it consistent where the color is the same secret serial number throughout everything you do. Um, but you destroy the industry when you do that. You destroy the collecting world. And so please stop because this set here is gorgeous. And it would be gorgeous if I could have completed it. It would be phenomenal if I could have completed it. I could have give, posted a video up for you to go showcase, oh, hey, look at this beautiful set, like you did with my 2010 Absolute Patches set. Yes, you, you spotlighted me on that because I have an incredible set of that. But now, a guy that you featured on, on, on your, um, your Knight's Day page or whatever, no longer going to support you because you do stupid crap like put in a two of two of this set. Or where's Durrell? Or of seven, when basically every other card is out of 50. And, and how do you, how, how, how do you get out of 19? Are you that 
poor, like you ran out of material that you couldn't put it together, like you didn't have any more Matthew Stafford jersey, they're like, oh, I guess we'll just put do 19 on this one. I don't get it. Could have been an incredible set featured about your design, set build or card building ability, making ability. Instead, it's crap. And I, and I'm guessing a lot of other collectors, are tired of it and would like to see you put out some type of communication and say, you know what? We hear you, community. We're going to change how we do some of this stuff. We're going to put logic behind it. We're going to stop issuing player worn memorabilia. We're going to stop producing a card that shows somebody in a Florida State Seminoles uh, jersey and then put in a Michigan State patch. Up your quality control. Um, it's just embarrassing. You get, and you're making a joke out of yourselves. So please stop, especially since you have the, the monopoly on NFL licensed. And that's the type of card I want to collect. That means I can't collect NFL cards modern until, you're, until you either get your act together or your license wears out and I can buy actually some decent cards. So if you guys have any questions you ever want to comment or contact me, by all means, when I submit this video, talk to me. I can tell you, I'll give you a whole bunch of feedback from a lot of collectors that uh, have issues with you guys. But until then, no, I gotta do it. Later.